EDM board bombs. Welcome back to another EDM board bombs episode. I am so excited to be here today because we have the one, the only. He's pretty rare. He used he used to be a horse. Now he's a zebra because we don't see him that often. <laughs> Doctor Iltafat Hussein is back in the flesh. I'm back. I'm excited. On a video hey, look, podcast. You know, we needed to give Marlene some time, too, to do we her do. thing. We do. Come on it's, now. it's wonderful having Marlene on here. I know that our, our yeah. fans are enjoying Marlena. And, uh, but Dr. Hussein has to make an appearance every now and then, I, too. I like to be in the background, yeah. you know, like pulling some of the levers in the background. That's, right. that's what I like to do. It's kind of like um, proof of residence when you have to go visit a country to, to maintain your citizenship. Yeah, it's kind of like you showing up to maintain the fact that you are the co-founder. And I am the co-founder. Well. I am the co-host, and but I also <laughs> remotely am doing so much. You know, there's a big burden on my shoulders. Well, no one cares about behind the scenes kind of things. I know. I'm sorry. I know they don't. We're not going to. Yeah. We're not going to get into the whole. No, the, the mechanics, the, 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 the podcast mechanics how, Yeah, people just think we come on here and we just record a pod. They don't understand yeah. all the back end mm -hmm. stuff that's required. We're not going to get into that. We're not going to that. Hey, no Canada. breaks. I'm just excited to uh, be back. Yes. Um, I'm excited about this topic as well. Yes, me too. We're going to be doing. You know? Hey, before we get into this topic, we have to give yeah. credit to two things. One, we have to yes. tell people what we are. So we're Ian Board Bombs. <laughs> right. You this is Merch Smith and Board Bombs. I know. I know. It's like one of the most popular it, podcasts in yes. you know medical right. world. I know. I just have to, I just have to get the, 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 the intro line, you know. The, yeah. The, the sponsors you know want it. To, all like those, all those sponsors countries. want it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. there's so many Come for the stems. Stay for the content. Stay for the content. Yeah. Okay. Okay. 15, 20 minute episodes, board prep, life knowledge. Great. Awesome. Right. Hey, shout out to one of our sponsors, yes. our only sponsor. Our only sponsor. You know, EM the News. funny thing is that we <laughs> had opportunities to take other sponsorships yes. and EM News is literally the only one. We've yeah, we, that's, all we took. that's because we have something called values. Yes. 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 And they provide their content for what? Free. For free. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah. EM News, check it out. It's the number one source for emergency medicine physicians in terms mm. of journal publications. If you're an emergency physician, you get a free subscription to EM News. So just send them an email. Awesome Go to their website, emnews.com. Our podcast is listed on that website. Of course, you can go to emboardbombs.com. Check out all the amazing episodes we have. We have handouts. We have an airway quiz. We have our question bank podcast. We'll mm -hmm. hint at later, but check all that out. We should honestly be sitting on a beach somewhere. You know, yeah. board season is pretty much over. The November boards, at least fall boards. And people should be expecting us to be kicking back the amount mm -hmm. of work we did to prepare people for boards. Yeah. We sit back on the beach. Well, we loved and, it. Yeah. And we don't drink. So we'd be doing virgin martinis. It'd be great. <laughs> hey, why uh, don't you dive into the stem for us here? Because you spend a lot of time on it. I am. A lot the of stem's kind of long. It's kind mm, of, it's okay. I, I hope you find it somewhat hilarious, but I, I enjoyed it. Anyways. Good. Let's delve into it. A 66 year old female with ESRD on dialysis, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, presents to your ED with the chief complaint of needing dialysis. She's febrile to 102, heart rate is 95, respiratory rate is 13, pulse ox is 98%, and blood pressure is 160 over 90. She denies cough, congestion, shortness of breath. She reports missing her dialysis session yesterday due to watching the premiere of Catching Fire, a Hunger Games prequel movie that just came out. She's upset that it's not as good as the book, although she also admits that the book itself was not as good as these original books that came out. For, I heard it was bad. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Ugh, I haven't watched yeah. it yet. Don't tell me. Uh, I yeah. thought the book was decent. Anyways, physical exam reveals a normal pulmonary exam, skin exam, and her AV fistula has a good thrill. And her appropriate brewery Check. appears to be present, right? Other than the patient's creatinine and GFR, which are very just not Bad. correct. <laughs> Her blood work is reassuring. Her chest x-ray is unremarkable. When you go to reassess her, you notice she's removed her IV, gotten dressed, and is about to walk off. She informs you in a friendly manner that the town hall you gave her for her fever and chills that she was experiencing helped. And she already reviewed her my chart on her phone and her potassium was okay. You curse Epic's my chart under your breath for again telling your patient the results before you get a chance to tell them. And you proceed to do which of the following. Is it A, you discharge the patient with instructions to return if she doesn't feel well? B, request nephrology perform emergency dialysis in the ER? C, obtain blood cultures, start the patient on IV vancomycin, and admit to the hospital? Or D, obtain a RVP, respiratory viral panel, and discharge her?
Hey, Briggs, what's the correct answer? Hmm. I'm going to go with the most aggressive oh, one. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey, we, we have to talk about something before. Mm, what's that? Our Rapid Bombs podcast. Oh, yeah, that thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Rapid course, Bombs, how could I three to five minute episodes, 400 episodes. It's blown up. It's done great. IT mm-hmm. season's coming around. Mm-hmm. But more than just IT season, if you just want to like learn emergency medicine knowledge, get multiple emails dropped a week to your inbox, custom emails dropped to your inbox with high yield pearls, and just want to be a lifelong learner, sign up for EM Rapid Bombs. Hey, where can they find it? EMBoardBombs.com. Surprise. 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 EMBoardBombs.com. Go there. Look for an interactive podcast. You'll mm-hmm. see it. Sign up. You can sign up right on our website now. It's pretty hey, awesome. Hey, you know what's even better for IT mm-hmm. prep? We what? have residency discounts. Yes, that's true. That's so true. talk to some of your classmates. Get your pre, get your uh, PD involved. Mm-hmm. Check it out. Yeah, residency yeah. discounts, man. If you get a bunch uh, just together, signed up together, mm-hmm. we offer discounts as well. Sure We've got a decent number of residents oh, yeah. now. Even residencies in Canada. We actually have a couple mm-hmm. Canadian residencies that have gone together in on it and gotten the residency discount. So it's pretty cool. Every now and then they have to translate it over to Canadian, but... Yeah, our Canadian's not that great, but we no, use not. Google Translate for that. We do. We do. It's very helpful. Hey. It is. <laughs> hey, the correct answer here is going to be choice C, obtain blood culture, start the patient on IV vancomycin, and admit to the hospital. Why is that? Well, there's very obvious things. Let me give you some basic math. You ready? Mm. SIRS. Yes. Plus dialysis. Mm. Equals likely bacteremia. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Upwards of 20%. I'm going to start calling yes. it the the, yep. uh, the Blake paradigm. <laughs> so if you had a benign cause, like a viral infection, such as like COVID or whatever, or a virus, yeah, that's great. But the fact of the matter is, is they have one abnormal vital sign being mm. a fever. And technically they have two because surge criteria is greater than 90. Their heart rate's 95. Right. That is criteria for admission to the hospital. Yeah, and really, really to dive in even deeper on that, this mm-hmm. is like one of those patients that looks great. And it's mm-hmm. hilarious because you'll have that 92 year old female that comes in uh, who looks great, but has a fever, is a little bit tacky and Always has COVID. Awkward. And and that one you're like discharging, right? Of course. And because you know the cause. But if that if you didn't know the cause of that patient's, yes. uh, that 90 plus year old's like fever and tachycardia, you're admitting that patient. Right. Yes. I mean, you're not sending home like some unknown, you know, fever of unknown. Careful, origin. don't don't trigger any of our listeners if they did that this week. <laughs> I'm sure they're going to be okay. By the way, <laughs> yeah, but you are sending them home. No, you are, no. But look again to clarify, like mm-hmm. the end stage renal disease patient, unless you have, you know, unknown like if they have COVID and that's what's triggering all this stuff, that's okay to discharge that one. It really sure. is, you know. But if that you don't know what's going on, like in this case everything's negative. You don't know what's causing that patient's fever. It's really bacteremia unless until otherwise proven. Does that make sense, Briggs? Absolutely. I think so, it's really important. It's it, it's one of the weirdest things it really is because we're discharging folks with like SIRS, uh, sepsis with COVID and we're like, ah, they're going to be fine. Uh, but when you well, don't know, but yeah, 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 for the most part um, in this current variant, but when you, <laughs> do, and, and if they look good, <laughs> All the caveats come out. Hey, um, let me let me do a segue here. Yeah. What are we talking about today? <laughs> That's what I want to know. I know. Look, we're talking about dialysis emergencies here. Oh, so hyperkalemia, right? All about hyperkalemia. Like, please, no. We're not. Look, this <laughs> oh, is so frustrating. Um, I know. That's all we're going to talk about. We're not going to talk about hyperkalemia. We're not going to talk about a patient who comes in grossly volume overloaded. We all know what to do for these patients. Give them the right medications for hyperkalemia. We all know that. My gosh. Like, I think first year med students now learn this. I don't, I think they actually learned it for the MCAT and then get, <laughs> give dialysis, you know, for patients who have just gross volume. The overloaded. ultimate reset button. Exactly. So what we're going to focus on again is key dialysis emergencies, some of the complications that are more subtle and that mm-hmm. actually require your brain to work. Uh, just, I'm so sorry. I, I, I can't help myself. There's just one pro tip about hyperkalemia. We do have to talk about the EKG oh changes of hyperkalemia reflects alterations in the resting cardiac transmembrane potential. So what that basically means is it depends on the ratio of the intracellular to extracellular potassium, not just the extracellular concentration. So really 
don't go based on what the actual just potassium number itself is. You got to get that EKGs. Uh, patients with only mildly elevated serum potassium levels can have marked EKG changes, whereas others with a higher level may have minimal EKG changes. So really treat that EKG, not just the lab values, but if the lab value is like eight, I might just treat it anyways. Just saying, keeping it real, keeping it real breaks. <laughs> it's all about that. <laughs> Hey, so back to Dallas's emergencies pod, mm -hmm. you know, first it's important to, you know, when you're managing Dallas patient, why, why is it important to know Dallas's emergencies? Briggs, can you tell me what percentage of your ED visits are from Dallas's patients? Yeah, a lot. Yeah. A lot. Like 5% of all ED patients in the United States. Yeah. Yeah. And That's a lot. That's a lot. And to dive into it even more, you're talking about 150 to 250 visits per 100 dialysis patients per year. I mean, there are literally some hospitals that like, up to 20% of their patients' ED visits are coming That's from insane. dialysis patients, you know, in some, in some centers, mm -hmm. which is just absolutely nuts. So you really need to know how to manage these patients. Um, right. So when it comes to managing these patients, the history, uh, this is one of those where you, you need to know the right questions to ask. So, hey, what's your dry weight? The dialysis patient might not know their age, but they're going to know their dry weight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they literally they know their dry unless weight. They go, unless they don't yeah. go to dialysis. Yeah, unless <laughs> but even if they don't go to dialysis, they know their dry weight. Sure. Um, so with the recent changes to this, recent changes to the length of dialysis, how have the dialysis sessions gone? Has it been harder uh, recently? Uh, you know, that that can allude to certain types of facial complications, things like that. What's their blood pressure been during dialysis sessions? How much is being taken off? Maybe not enough was taken off. Maybe it was stopped early. What's their, you know, weight right now? Are they still producing urine? How much urine? I mean, there's some important questions to really think about, but really the dry weight, how much is being taken off? Do they still produce urine? Those are some of the common ones that, you know, you want to really know about your dialysis patients. So right. let's talk about the biggest thing that causes morbidity and mortality in dialysis patients. We're kind of going to go backwards here. We're going to talk about, you know, what causes morbidity and mortality and then focus on, you know, how to look out for those things, how to manage this. This is things. easy. I already know the answer. Yeah. What? What is it? Obviously, it's hyperkalemia. Oh, my gosh. Stop. Just stop. <laughs> just stop. stop. You're triggering me. You were just Trigger. trying to trigger. Trigger. You can trigger me this pod by just mentioning hyperkalemia. Mm -hmm. My goal is to not talk about how to manage hyperkalemia on this pod. <laughs> Even though you already mentioned how to manage hyperkalemia. I kind of, you know, I, I look, I'm, we're trying to come at it from a different angle. Okay. Sure. Um, so, no. What, so, Briggs, talk about, you know, what counts. So, for, yeah, not hyperkalemia, but the number one source of mortality in dialysis patients is cardiovascular disease. Overall, It's about correct. 30 to 50% of deaths, depending on the study you read, but it's high. Yeah. It's high. It includes, yeah. of course, ischemic heart disease, any type of heart failure, any type of cardiac arrest from an arrhythmia or other related issues. Mm -hmm. And the death rates from cardiovascular disease are much higher in dialysis patients, much yeah. higher compared to the general population. In fact, they say most, like 50% of patients on dialysis from one study I read 50% of them are dead within 10 years, which honestly yeah. seems like too far of a time in my opinion, yeah. like 10 years is pretty yeah. far out. Yeah. Now the second most common source of mortality is going to be infection. Mm -hmm. This accounts for like 10 to 36%. You don't have to know these percents, just know kind of the order yeah. we're going in and the big risk factors. Sepsis is just so much more common in these patients. And infection is the number one cause of hospitalization and death in the first few years on dialysis. Now, of course, the third cause of mortality is going to be withdrawn from dialysis, which mm -hmm. makes sense, right? 13 to 25% of these deaths. This is more common in older patients. Most common reason is just the failure to undergo dialysis. It's a stressful process, right? Compared to CRT, dialysis has a lot of fluid shifts. It's difficult to do. Yeah. And in frail older patients, especially those with failure to thrive, those with certain medical complications or vascular access issues, or even just the decision from family or the patient to say, you know what? We're done here. You know, let's just, let's just stop with this whole process. That's going to be a reason to withdraw. And of course, the last mortality issue here is going to be cancer related issues, which is rare. And it's most common for patients that have some type of oncologic history or kidney cancer. So don't really worry about that one. That's kind of the, the rare bird here, but really the top two that stand out to me are going to be the cardiovascular disease, yeah. obviously. And of course the infection, the top two that you need to think about and not dismiss when you see a dialysis patient. Exactly. 
Exactly. And, you know, again, I feel like for coronary vascular disease, we get it, you know, get the troponin, mm -hmm. look at EKGs. Uh, but infection tends to be like the biggest shock when oh, I talk yeah. to residents and med students about it, that they don't seem to even like process that part of it. They always guess the other things first. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, the fact that it's the leading cause of hospitalization and death within the first few years on dialysis, it tends to mm -hmm. be a shock to many. So um, let's first, let's talk about cardiovascular emergencies right. and dialysis patients. Honestly, it's, it's pretty straightforward. So cardio, you, you alluded to this earlier, cardiovascular disease mortality is 10 to 30 times higher in dialysis right. patients. You know, you have coronary uh, artery disease. And, you know, you have to also think like for these dialysis patients, what led them to develop dialysis, a lot of it, you know, they're going to have some of those risk factors that are going to lead to coronary vascular disease as of well. Course. Their heart failure is often from just diabetes, hypertension. Usually. Yeah. yeah. I mean, how many times have you had a dialysis patient show up uh, that has like a normal blood pressure, right? <laughs> There's like, there should be a button in Epic that's like, you know, can normal I, blood I, pressure and then dialysis that? blood How pressure. many times have you had a patient show up with a normal blood pressure? <laughs> <laughs> that's... Any patient. <laughs> I know, I know. But I'm there, there's, there's the dialysis blood pressure too, where that sure. diastolic at baseline, it's just like 120, right? Fupping uh, away. There, there should be yeah. like different, you know, when you present a patient, and the blood pressure yeah. is normal for this dialysis yeah. patient, which is uh, 160 over 90, you know? Uh, anyways, uh, yeah. they're going to have elevated troponins oftentimes. Um, again, it's a reflection of, you know, LVH and just microvascular disease, but mm -hmm. please just don't ignore troponins either. It's not always demand it's related. Stress. I know it's always just, oh, it's a dialysis troponin. Well, I mean, look yeah. and compare it to prior troponins, especially in the age right. of high sensitivity, right? Uh, look and see where their baseline troponins right. are. Um, and you also shouldn't just reflexively think that, you know, someone having a slightly elevated troponin, it's been like that for the last like five years, all of a sudden that is now like an end STEMI. Uh, just yeah. compare it to prior. Right. For pulmonary edema, if they're coming in just acute pulmonary edema, you know, BiPAP, give the these usual. patients IV nitro, they like it. Um, think back to our famous episode on SCAPE, right? If you know, you know. It's not flash pulmonary edema, it's SCAPE. And I'm not going to say anything else. That was such if a you great know, episode, you by know. the way. That was, it was, that was, it was like in the record books, one of the it, best episodes. It really was. Oh, my gosh. If you know, you know. With the Chris Nolan shout outs we did. Oh, my God. And it, it's been, that thing's Bain, been referenced so Bain many was, times. How many times was Bane referenced? Gosh, that was amazing. Anyways, we're going to move on. And our hardcore listeners are going to know exactly how to get to that episode. You know what? Hey, yeah. drop it in our show notes as well. Yes. Breaks, yes. Uh, for some of the folks uh, who don't know. Uh, so, I love this next one you're about to talk about. <laughs> I love this. No, I love this yeah. because I've had so many, so many teaching moments with this from unexplained cardiac tachycardia, yeah. unexplained yeah. tachycardia in a volume yeah. of loaded patient, All right. do a cardiac ultrasound, look at the heart. Right. And, right. and, and you will find, you'll be surprised mm -hmm. for a pericardial effusion that's present there. Right. That of course does not show up on chest x-ray. Nope. Nope. And will not really show up in EKG. Right. And will not really show up in the troponins. And right. you're kind of flying blind, but you have to do an ultrasound. Right. And again, cardiac tamponade in these patients, it, it's not going to present in that classical no. way sometimes. And the symptoms in the dialysis patient it can be just altered mental status, hypotension, shortness of breath, get that right. chest x-ray, like you said, breaks, you know, do that ultrasound. One of the weird things too, sometimes if they're having hypotension during dialysis, sometimes that can be an indicator of a, a cardiac tamponade mm -hmm. as well. Right. Um, and then pericarditis, um, usually that's secondary to uremia in dialysis patients. Uh, they have, you know, just fluid overload and uh, abnormal platelet function. And one of the unique features here is that for uremic uh, pericarditis, does not show typical EKG changes of acute pericarditis. Yeah. Um, so you're not necessarily going to see uh, the typical pericarditis, you know, ST uh, elevations throughout um, the inflammatory cells. They're, you know, they're not going to, you know, penetrate the myocardium. Um, and then the treatment for uremic pericarditis is going to no, be essentially dialysis. <laughs> it's going to be dialysis. Now, obviously, these are patients that you're looking at right. the BUN level right. than 60. I'm, I know we ignore that BUN lab mm. value a lot. Oh, yeah. At least I do. I mean, I see it elevated with the creatinine every now and then, and it helps me with, oh, pre-renal or maybe it's a you know, GI bleed or whatever. You know, <laughs> yeah. But like in all seriousness, like how many times you look at that and you're like, okay, whatever. It's like 25. Mm. Yeah. And I couldn't even tell you what half of the time it is on my patients. But in this case, this is really, really high. Greater than yeah. 60 is, is very elevated. Mm -hmm. So just don't ignore that and say, oh, it's just a dialysis patient. Um, think about the issue of having chest pain and it's a high BUN, then you got to be thinking about pericarditis, which is not completely uncommon. 
Hey, uh, home stretch here. Let's get into the presentation of what our STEM actually was about, as mm -hmm. our listeners are now wondering where they're going to learn about uh, infection and surge criteria. <laughs> uh, I did a podcast a few weeks ago uh, on sepsis, and uh, I, some of the listeners commented that I was pretty salty in that episode. Mm. And I explained to them that it was very difficult to joyfully talk about the surge criteria in sepsis because of all the uh, hospital innuendos now that are associated with sepsis. But let's, yeah. <laughs> let's yeah, get, actually get, get into the meat. I'm not going to even get into let's that. Let's get into the meat of what you need to know here mm. and what our STEM was actually about. And remember that infection accounts for the pretty much the second most common cause of Dallas's right. deaths, up to like 35% or so of Dallas's deaths. So tell us kind of more about that. Obviously, they're prone to infection for a variety of reasons. I think the most obvious one is, gee, I wonder, they go into a healthcare center mm. uh, where there are resistant infectious agents, and they are having a large bore needle hooked up to a fistula or vas <laughs> cath that is indwelling into their body. Gee, I wonder. And they get hooked up to a machine that automatically four filters hours. their blood for four hours as four they sit there in a healthcare hours setting. Hours a day. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. And their immune function also, oh, I wonder when they have their blood circulating through a dialysis machine that they, uh, their, all their little platelets get chopped up and immune modulators get chopped up. <laughs> I wonder. <laughs> I wonder if there is a risk of them catching healthcare associated infections. Right. Right. And, and you know, the way you put it right there, it, it also <laughs> like a graphic novel. It, it, you also music. understand what type of bacteria you're dealing with too, right? Yeah, sure. So, yeah, so honestly, if you have a dialysis patient that presents with fever or signs of sepsis, first check their dialysis access yeah. sites, check their catheter or fistula or, mm -hmm. you know, for PD patients, the, the period, you know, peritoneal dialysis site. And that's a whole uh, other topic, by the way. That, peritoneal that, dialysis that really infections. is. Peritoneal dial yeah, that yeah. PD dialysis infections. You should uh, subscribe to Rapid thing. Bombs. We'll talk about it. Exactly. Yeah. So when it comes to vascular access, you know, sites, uh, those vascular access and, you know, infections, they're going to be the actually the most common overall infection. Mm -hmm. uh, again, exit site infections, tunnel infections, bacteremia related to dialysis catheters, fistulas, or grafts. Bloodstream infections are the leading cause of hospitalization and death can arise from these access sites and just frankly other sources because again, they're exposed to so many of these in the healthcare setting. Then you have the usual culprits such as respiratory, right. viral, you know, don't forget your PD patients with peritonitis. We, uh, you, we talked about that, uh, you know, mm -hmm. in one of our rapid bombs recently. Do a broad infectious workup, get blood cultures, chest x-ray and urine studies if they still produce urine. Uh, so let's talk about bacteremia and the types of bacteria that affect dialysis patients. Hey, this mm, is my, my favorite part. This is this is honestly my favorite. Word. This is so easy. This is so ridiculous easy. Yes. Uh, what is the number one bacteria that affects dialysis patients mm. after that novel and just the poetic way you waxed on, you mm -hmm. know, what they're exposed to? I was going to try to be funny and think of the most rare bacteria possible, but for the interest of time... Yeah. It's going to be Staphylococcus aureus. Yes, it really is. It's Staphylococcus <laughs> Up to 50% of yeah, the time. We're insane. not talking about like 10 to 20%, maybe. No, up to 50% of the time, it's Staphylococcus. And obviously, Just MSRA. Just a silent, silent culprit here. It really. <laughs> Just staff over here is silently just killing along. Just. <laughs> I know, right? I mean, it's just so obvious. Oh, was it me? You were, is it me you were looking for again? <laughs> is that Adele? This would be a Adele song right there for like staff, right? <laughs> it's me again? Can, you know. Hey, uh, so MR, MRSA, obviously, you know, yeah, think about up. that as well, right? So that's why, what is the Dallas patient's best friend? It's vancomycin. 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 The best part is, is you're More wondering if it's renotoxic. Well, <laughs> does that really matter? <laughs> Isn't that, is, is, I mean, there's just some, something about that where it's like vancomycin mm -hmm. is their best friend. It is, you know, going to mess up kidneys, but guess what? It doesn't matter anymore. Kind of so. like giving Tordal too. <laughs> I know, right? Sorry, we're not sponsored by Tordal. We, we are hey, no the other longer. antibiotic you have to add though to cover, you know, gram negative though, you know, your options are going to be usually a third gen cephalosporin, like ceftriaxone or ceftazidine. That's mm -hmm. fine. Very rarely, if they can't tolerate that or something weird is going on or an allergy, you're going to have to reach for like an amino glycoside like gentamicin. And then every pharmacist, mm -hmm. pharmacist in the world will curse your name 
that yes. you ordered gentamicin on yeah, somebody. No, no so don't do that. Yeah. But try to stick with the third gen cephalosporin like ceftriaxone for these patients for the beauty empiric is, coverage. That's pretty much it. You that's know, it. Like it's really just being doing like a third generation cephalosporin. Yeah. And much of it is just recognition yeah. as to what's going to happen. Hey, let's just like summarize this very quickly. Oh, um, I can I can do it two sentences. Yeah, please. Number two. one. Cardiovascular death kills a lot of dialysis patients. Don't forget yeah. about that. Number yeah. two, infection kills the second most amount of dialysis patients. Mm. And whenever you see unexplained fever, unexplained tachycardia, or just in general, and not well appearing dialysis patient, order IV Vank and ceftriaxone and admit them to the hospital. Yeah, it's <laughs> quite really straightforward. <laughs> it really is. It really is. And don't, that's don't, the don't be a cowboy here. Yeah, don't, yeah, let's not, yeah, don't cowboy yeah. it, you know. No cowboys. Yeah, exactly. Um, hey, that's it. So go check out EM Rapid Bombs, obviously, mm. emboardbombs.com. You can click the link. The best part about EM Rapid Bombs is you can pay on the website, like straight up, sign up at our website, and you're rock and rolling right away. There's nothing else you have to worry about in terms of sign up. It's a great holiday gift, too, if you think about it. New year coming around the corner. New year, new you. Mm. <laughs> new Rapid Bombs. <laughs> <laughs> While you work out and start on that new workout regimen, yeah. just listen to us. Yeah. It'd be great. Big Our brain. Soothing voices. Small Duh. body. <laughs> hey, can we do a short? Let's do a short. Sure. All right. Lead us in. You got it. Do your face. Look at the camera again. Do that thing. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Dialysis patients. Number one leading cause of death. Number one. Cardiovascular. Got it. Got it. So take mm -hmm. the troponin seriously. Take their chest pain seriously. Don't just ignore them. And don't think it's always demand related. Mm -hmm. All right. Lead me in, Briggs. Number two. Thank you. <laughs> Number two. Infection. You had to point at the camera. Infection. That's the social, does it? They like kind of lean back and they like aim the camera and they. Like this? Do that. You have to do this too. You like point and grab. It's all the. How... <laughs> right. And number two. And number two. That's it. Slay queen. And number two. <laughs> this is so ridiculous. And number two, cause of death in Dallas's patient is infection up to 50% of the time. Coming from Staph aureus, remember MSRA coverage, give them Vink and a third generation cephalosporin, admit them to the hospital, and you're done. That's it. Write your note. Build critical care. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> <laughs>